Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Hamlet, which is on Kickstarter right now from publisher Mighty Boards and designer David Chirkup, who you might know from games like Petrichor or The Pursuit of Happiness. In Hamlet, we are a tiny little village with no church and we want to become a great big bustling town. How do we do that? by expanding our village and building said church. Contributing to the village is going to earn you victory points, and at the end of the game, those points are gonna tell us who contributed the most to our village becoming a lovely town. The game's for one to four players. It's going to have a solo mode from David Tortsey and Nick Shaw, who have made incredible solo modes both separately and together. So I haven't got that in my prototype, but expecting great things from that. As I mentioned, it's on Kickstarter. So this is a prototype. The Kickstarter will show you what the final stuff will look like, and this should give you a good idea. You know, it's representative of the final thing, but these are, you know, stickered pieces on cardboard. And uh, instead of uh, amazing donkey meeple, that you can see on the Kickstarter page. I've got discs, but we can imagine, can't we? It's not a hexagonal cylinder, it's a flag. So I've got the game set up for two players. It's a little bit different with more players in that uh, some tiles have other sides. There is an extra medal in the game, but generally you'll get the idea. At the start of the game, we have a villager and a donkey. On your turn, you can move your donkeys and activate your villagers. Do that in any order you like, but all of your donkeys have to be moved in one go. All the ones you want to move have to be moved with one action. You can't activate a villager, then move a donkey, activate another villager, move another donkey. You've got to do all the donkeys in one go, basically. Am I hammering that point home too much? Maybe. So your donkeys are going to be how resources get moved in this game. We'll see that when we need resources. But for your villager, what can they do? They can activate a building, they can construct a building, or they can construct a road. Activating buildings is as simple as going to the building. It has to be connected by a road, and depending on what that building is, you'll do things. Uh, the way we are at the start of the game, we have these production buildings. Going here, uh, it makes you work in the woodcutters. So you fill all the spaces up with wood, and you will earn yourself two gold for working in the woodcutters for the day. And then you lie down, that's the end of your round, and that's that. Same goes for the quarry and the farm, except they produce ore and wheat. The market over here can have resources delivered to it to help you fulfill an order. The red shows you what it needs, the green shows you what you'll get. You also take the tile because uh, some things might reward you for making a lot of deliveries throughout the game. It also says here, three gold for one of these basic resources, six gold for a refined resource. If you need a resource, and you can't quite get it delivered or it isn't on the board just yet, you can pay for a resource. You don't have to be at the market for this. The market just reminds you of it. The church is where we're going to get things delivered, uh, and ultimately that's going to end the game once everything's delivered to the church. The town hall is a place where you can spend money for more workers and or donkeys, but also you can get blueprints from here. Just above the scoreboard is the blueprint zone. You can get inspiration for one of the buildings on offer here. The one on the left costs you nothing. Uh, the one in the middle, you're going to have to put a gold on the one in the left. And if you want the one on the right, you're going to have to put a gold each on the other two. And later on, when people get those blueprints, they get the gold that's on them. But you can take blueprints. Obviously, new ones will come out of the bag, which just has basic tiles in it at the start of the game. But that's going to change once uh, refineries and things are built. In the future, Marty wants to build. You have to have your villager in a tile adjacent to where your building is going to go. And what if you placed it like this? Now... You have to match roads to roads. You don't have to match forest to forest or stone to stone, but it would help if you did. As it is here, stone is matched up to stone. The dairy farm needs wood and ore to be built. How do we get it there? Well, the resources by themselves can go to an adjacent tile. So they can deliver to the church, actually, these basic buildings. To get them further, you need donkeys. So they will go to an adjacent place for free. The donkeys will then move them one adjacent hex each. So you'll see that Marty has shrewdly laid out his donkeys so that the wood can make it over to the dairy farm. So it needs two wood. That's all available because I did the work at the woodcutters. The ore is available from the quarry along the same path. And just like that, the dairy farm is built. Marty will get the rewards in green now. Four points and... What's this? A medal. For being the first person to build a milk refinery, Marty is the herder. All of the milk that he generates will be high quality, which means he will get better rewards from people using his milk. Resources don't need roads to be able to get where they're going. But if you ever want to activate the building, you're going to need some roads. That's another action that you could do on a future turn. You want to be on a tile that you want to have a road built in. If the two sides are both stone, it costs two wood to build the road. If the two sides were both forest, it would cost two ore. So you know, the opposite. So just like this, oh, there's wood available again. 
So coming over here, Marty could spend that two wood to build a road here. There is actually an award for being the first person to build a road, which makes your bridges and paths worth extra points. I could even jump over on my turn and be the first person to make a milk. So you can see over here, the red is the cost. It's going to be wheat, which can come from the farm, donkey, donkey, dairy farm. And I produce a milk. All of the players have these refined resources here. Uh, I would just produce normal milk. The person with the metal can produce refined milk. And I can make this. And when it's needed for something, when it's used, I will get a reward. I don't get the reward for making it. But as soon as someone uses this milk, I will get a coin and a point. If Marty had been the person to make his special high quality milk, he would get double these rewards when it's used. So that's something that we can do with the, the refined buildings that are out there. Another thing, though, all of the refined materials have a special pile of tiles. As soon as we have that resource in the game, those tiles go into the bag with the basic ones and will come out for future blueprints. Another type of building is a landmark. So this pond over here, it can't be activated, but it's got this flag on it. So if I put it here next to the woodcutters, the wood can come over to an adjacent place, no problem. Doesn't matter that there's no roads. I place my flag on it to say that I've built it, but it's going to have to be connected if I want it to be worth any points. This is worth three points at the end if I've connected it by a path. So on a future turn, I would want to have some ore available so I could build a forest to forest path over here and make that activate by the end of the game. We'll also want to be delivering to the church, of course. The church wants 10 coins in a delivery, which you can just pay from your own reserves. Uh, three milk or bricks, a mix of those as you please, and you get the points as you deliver them. Uh, it wants three planks or flour, a mix of those, and a mix of 10 of the basic resources, wood or, or wheat. Delivering all of those things will trigger the end of the game. Once we've all had the same number of turns, we have end game scoring. So first of all, there are awards. The person with the most landmarks, the flag buildings at the end of the game, gets four points. The most sales at the market gets four points. And the most church deliveries at the end of the game gets five points. In a game with more players, there's also a, a reward for second place on the church deliveries. Then we look at our beautiful sprawling town now and look at all of the landmarks, see if they've been satisfied, connected to the road network and score their points according to what they say. Then we zoom out and look at our beautiful sprawling town now, no longer a hamlet, and we score all of the landmark buildings, check their requirements, who owns them and score their points accordingly. We can look at all of the bridges and paths that everyone built and they score a point for each building that relies on that road to being connected to the network. So you see this uh, road I built here, the windmill and the master stonemason are only connected to the network thanks to my road. So that one would score two points. Every bridge and path scores like that. You get a point for every three gold that you've got. And then whoever has contributed the most wins the game. But we can all be satisfied at our beautiful, strange town. So there we go. That is Hamlet. Again, the Kickstarter page is linked in the description if you would like to check it out, see how you can get hold of it. There's a special Founders Deluxe Edition that's available through this Kickstarter. And I'm sure you can find out even more over there. If you'd like to live in an opinion-free zone, then thank you for watching. But if you would like to know what I think about the game, that bit will happen now. So I was very excited based on the theme itself and the designers previous games really enjoyed Petrichor, absolutely loved Pursuit of Happiness, which was a co-design. But anyway, this is about Hamlet. Uh, yes, I love the... So first of all, the strange tile laying that is, you know, plenty of different sizes and connections, but even more than that, plenty of different shapes as well. You are often puzzling out how to fit something in particular into the world because you don't really want to build these bridges and paths, especially early on. You want to try and connect them, but especially in the two player game, you've got very few connections on the road. I think only the market has an open road to it. So you're often just trying to work out how can I angle this so it will fit in the gap that I've got and the road will connect. Can I even do that though? Because my kind of uh, delivery network is over on this side. So do I want to Go to the effort of building a road so that it can i don't have to move everything over here and that goes hand in hand with the logistical puzzle uh, how to get your resources where they need to go through what else but donkeys they are very limited in where they can move and you know it's expensive getting loads of them although it will help uh, you to get things further afield if you've got uh, loads of them but yeah it's a beautiful balancing act of having the resources when you need them and having your donkeys in place uh, to be able to build the thing you want or produce the thing that you need at that time. Whilst also juggling, you know, 
who made that refined resource? Who's going to benefit from this? Isn't the one of mine that I can use? Can I afford the extra turn to go and make some refined brick? Can I afford to spend another turn going and making my own high quality bricks because I can use my own and get these and get double the rewards for them. But maybe the all that I need isn't going to be there next time or the building spot I desperately need isn't going to be available. And thanks to uh, real life logistics, I haven't had uh, as much time with the game as I would like, but I love the kind of agonizing decisions that the game keeps putting you in. And there's so many times you can just almost do what you need to. And if that light bulb would just go off, you'll just figure out how to do it. Oh, it's, it's really, really satisfying. On top of that, you know, it looks lovely. It's bright, cheery, colorful, really like the artwork. And it goes along with the nice uh, theme of we're building up this Hamlet into a town. Just based on my two player experience with the prototype, would love to play more. And hopefully we'll be back with a final version one day uh, to give you a full playthrough of it. For now, though, it's Kickstarter. And yeah. The link for that is in the description. If you'd like to see more from me, uh, I've made hundreds of playthroughs and other videos on this channel. Uh, you can check loads of those out. For I've done them for Petrichor and Pursuit of Happiness, actually. Pursuit of Happiness one's a little bit old now. Maybe it's time for a new one. But hey, uh, yes, and if you'd like to support me, uh, patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Thank you so much to everyone that keeps the channel going in that way. Thank you for spending time with me, though. And I hope you are intrigued about Hamlet. I will see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. <laughs>